Holy Paladins are a force to be reckoned with, being great healers at the start of Wrath and becoming the best healers in the game. I mean, just look at the representations it has in both arena brackets. It will become insane. So let's dive into the starter guide on how to build your Holy Paladin in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top healing, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. For Alliance players, Human is just the best by far. Will to Survive acts as a PvP medallion, which means you essentially have three trinket slots all the time. It allows you to pick up mana trinkets or extra healing trinkets, which are both extremely powerful throughout Wrath. The only other comparable racial is Dwarf that works well into Assassination Rogues, but they are a rare breed in Wrath, making them a lackluster choice. As for Horde, well, your option is actually forced into being a Blood Elf. You gain an AoE silence provided you're close to your target, which can come in clutch in certain situations. That being said, if you could choose between Blood Elf or Human, you would still prefer to be Human. With your race sorted, it's time to go into the talents of a Holy Paladin. The standard build for a Paladin in Season 5 is built around Blessing of Wisdom and will consist of talents that look like this with one talent that can be interchangeable. This talent is where Improved Devotion Aura is, which can basically be put into Holy Guidance or Divine Intellect. All of these passive talents are good, so this talent point can be used based on your personal preference. Blessing of Wisdom spec is needed for Season 5 to have sufficient mana regen in most matchups. Without improved Blessing of Wisdom, you are bound to encounter lots of mana issues, especially in 2v2. Later on in this expansion, when you can get stronger MP5, then you can put these two talents elsewhere. Holy Shock and Infusion of Light synergize extremely well and help define the strength of Holy Paladin and Wrath. Even though this interaction might be RNG due to crit, having an instant cast Flash of Light means no risk of lockouts. Infusion of Light is OP when you can keep Sacred Shield up as well, giving you a bunch of extra healing. Sacred Cleansing is another RNG talent, but is a meta-defining part of Holy Paladin. You will be using Cleanse a lot as a Holy Pally, so having extra resistance against casters will immensely help. This can help you keep important debuffs like Immolate, Wound Poison, or even DK Diseases from being continuously applied to your team. Aura Master has been a staple for Holy Paladins and will be a great addition to your toolkit. Its main use is with Concentration Aura, allowing you to free cast as it makes you immune to interrupt effects. When used well, it can be a reliable way to get off important heals when you heal someone in your party. A niche use of this is to use it with Shadow Resistance to try and resist fears from priests. The last talent in the Holy Tree is Beacon of Light, allowing you to multi-target heal with more ease. In 2v2, you can always beacon yourself, making it easy to heal you and your partner, while in 3s, you may have to swap it around depending on who's taking the most damage. Many of you may be familiar with Divine Favor, but it's very different on Wrath compared to Retail. It's a much longer cooldown here, but it's still incredibly strong. You should always use this on Holy Shock in order to benefit from gaining a free Flash of Light proc, allowing you to easily heal any target. When playing with Divine Illumination, this can be critical to great mana management. You can use it if you need to swap beacons on your partners, as this costs a high amount of mana. You can also use it when you're needing to spam Holy Shocks early on to deal with offensive cooldowns at the start of arena games. Just be careful when using this against offensive dispel teams, as they will look to try and remove this buff. The last main talent is having Divine Sacrifice and Divine Guardian. This basically makes your Divine Sacrifice a powerful party cooldown to reduce damage taken on everyone. As such, you can use this during high burst pressure moments or to deal with offensive cooldowns from the enemy team. Moving on to your best glyphs, the choices here will be quite limited. Glyph of Holy Shock will be your only staple glyph, which is always good. It allows you to pump more Holy Shocks in a game, which makes your healing life even better. The second glyph for Season 5 can be a bit situational, but usually Seal of Wisdom is preferred, helping out with mana. If you find yourself not needing the mana, then you could swap this out for Seal of Light, which will increase your healing output slightly. The last glyph is really situational, with Turn Evil being really good in Season 5, where DKs and Warlocks are most popular. This is due to Glyph of Turn Evil being able to fear Gargoyle reducing pressure immensely. It's also great to fear succubus pets, which can be really annoying due to seduce. If you feel like you don't need this glyph, then you could always resort to flash of light, giving you added crit chance, which will help a bit with the RNG factor. 
When it comes to your minor glyphs, there really isn't any other options other than going for Glyph of Kings, Wisdom, and Glyph of the Wise. Basically, these give a few mana cost reductions, which is nice, but the other three minor glyphs are also insanely lackluster to even consider. With glyphs covered, we can now move on to how to gear your character, showing a pre bis gear set as well as one that is fully best in slot. When it comes to your stat priority, it will look something like this. Resilience will be your most favorable stat. Having damage reduction is key in order to be tanky enough in arena, surviving passive pressure, and huge burst windows so you can live. Next up is spell power, increasing your healing throughput to help you and your partners topped in HP. Your third best stat will be an equal amount of MP5 and haste. Having more mana regen will be essential for drawn out fights to try and have a mana advantage, which could outright win you the game. Haste will allow your globals and casting time to be quicker. This is essential for healing in general, considering you'll be spam cleansing and healing most of the game. The last priority is Critical Strike, which is still a sought out stat for Holy Paladins. Having increased crit rate will help your healing considerably, seeing as Critical Strikes on Holy Shock will help your healing out immensely. Even though Critical Strike is important, it can be a bit random, which is why Haste is above it. That means your pre bis Season 5 gear should ideally look like this. You want to pick up the 5 set pieces of Savage Gladiator gear to get the most resilience awarded possible. It also gives you a good amount of extra stats via the set bonuses. From Dungeons, you can look to pick up the Spark of Life trinket from Halls of Stone. This can help passively with extra mana regen and haste. Getting badges from Dungeons will also be useful as you can obtain these 4 pieces from them, giving you epic gear with good stats. Note that if you played in TBC and have the Brutal Gladiator's Librum of Justice, then this is actually better than this Librum, so you could use that instead. As for your other trinket slot and cloak, these are both BOE pieces that you can purchase from the auction house, giving you great stats. The bracers, boots, and weapon are also BOE, which you can get from the auction house, but you can also craft them if you have blacksmithing. This isn't your preferred profession as a holy paladin though, but we will get into that later. It is a viable choice, so some players might have it. Last of all, you have the two items, our rings, which are locked behind a rep grind, but will be worth farming for if you have the time. When it comes to your gems, you want to go for every socket bonus, as all stats received from these bonuses are beneficial to holy paladins. In yellow sockets, you'll want flat out resilience gems, especially from JC, as this gives you the most resilience on your gear. That means red gems should contain spell power plus resilience, and blue gems will have resilience and MP5 gems. This allows you to keep gaining resilience, as well as pick up nice extra stats, which are all useful for a holy paladin. Later on in the season, when you can raid and do a bunch of arena games, your gear will ideally have two types of bis gearing. One will be for 2v2, which is mostly PvP gearing, and the other will be for 3v3, using extra PvE items to help heal. This is due to not needing as much resilience in most 3v3 games compared to 2v2. For your 2s gearing, as you can see, you have Deadly Gladiator's gear in nearly every slot, with the exception of a few pieces of gear. The weapon, shield, rings, and one living ice crystals trinket will all come from raiding dungeons in Season 5. These pieces of gear either have superior spell power or stronger stats in general for Holy Paladin compared to the PvP pieces. The bind on equip trinket from preseason gearing also remains to be your best trinket during this season, so get your hands on it when you can. When it comes to your threes gearing, then you can ideally change your neck, bracers, and belt for PvE pieces that are acquired from raiding. These pieces lack resilience, but have all the other important stats essential for a Holy Paladin. In 3v3, you shouldn't need as much resilience compared to 2v2, so those stats will help to deal with mana and healing throughput. Bear in mind, the gem priority remains the same, using different types of resilience gems in all sockets in order to gain from every socket bonus. You should also have access to jewel crafting, gaining a bunch of extra resilience from the gems created here, being your best profession. It's also important to note that for min-maxing, you should aim to have the PvP weapon and shield as you can swap these weapons during an arena game. This is for min-maxing against any team where you are the target. If you know you could be a liability and want to have extra resilience, then swapping to these PvP weapons before you take heavy pressure can sometimes help you survive. As such, you'll want weapon macro bindings for this, and it may take a little while to get used to, but it can be beneficial if you want to take your Holy Paladin gameplay to the next level. You can also use a mix of PvP shields and weapons if you feel like you want a bit of extra resilience while maintaining good stats elsewhere. And no matter what, make sure your gear matters by learning how to heal just like a pro in our site exclusive Holy Paladin courses. Visit the link below to learn more. Even though we touched on this a bit, we will go over the best professions you should use as a Holy Pally. 
As common with most classes, jewel crafting takes the number one profession spot. Having extra resilience or spell power through the JC gems is just too good to miss out on compared to any other profession. The stat gain from jewel crafting is more potent and more flexible than any other profession. For your second profession, things get a bit tricky between a choice of engineering or blacksmithing. Basically, engineering seems better overall for 3v3 and blacksmithing is a bit better for 2v2. Both are quite close and could come down to personal preference. Having the engineering glove and chant can be nice for on-demand and haste in tricky situations where you want to get casts off or have fast globals. Blacksmithing will allow you to gain a bit more stats passively, which can be nice if you don't want the extra global on the enchant and giving you more resilience and spell power. As such, we recommend engineering as your second pick since 3v3 is a favored bracket, but you could be blacksmithing if you don't want an extra button. Finally, we can look into the macros you may want to use, making your gameplay more fluid. First off, we can talk about stop casting macros, which are simple yet effective for any spell you want to stop casting for. You can use this on a number of spells, as shown here, simply putting the stop casting text before the spell you want to use. You could also have a separate binding if you prefer, simply using that button to stop any cast at any time. Typical with healers, you'll have party macros for your cleanse binding, being useful in any arena game. This can be done with party macros or using player name macros as shown here. You can use either of these depending on your preference, just remember to add or change player names when playing with different partners. When using Hammer of Justice, we recommend having either focus macros or arena 123 macros here. These macros will help you hodge the right target at the right time. Make sure to bind them and get used to using them so you can stun the right target for your team. Other party ability bindings should be on Hand of Protection, Hand of Sacrifice, and Beacon of Light. These spells will need to be used on the correct party member at the right time. Having macros to help do this will make it easier to do this in time once you get used to your bindings. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Holy Paladin? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.